And I am delighted to introduce Harvey Price this evening. Um, most of you, I think, know that Westminster has a long history uh, and Greg and Camilla's involvement with the Peace Drums project. Um, there was a period of time where we were hearing about them regularly. Um, but as with many um, aspects of life, um, we've not had an update recently. Certainly we are all excruciatingly aware of the events going on in Israel, Gaza, the West Bank, and the work being done to build relationships and friendships um, across lines, across borders, um, to give particularly children a chance to experience something different, something more positive and more hopeful um, is extraordinary. And we are very grateful to have Harvey here tonight um, to share an update with us. So. so Sue, thanks a million. And I would say that Westminster is the history of, <laughs> of peace drums um, uh, with Greg and John and you know, so many, so many amazing people lending so much positivity toward it. And uh, today I had two previous Zoom calls um, about peace drums and, and both of them were, you know, really positive, um, you know, j just in terms of, of, of messaging and in terms of, of how people feel about the project itself. Um, briefly, um, I'll talk a little bit and then I'll, there's a real nice branding video. I think Greg, you may have seen this. I think you may have seen maybe the beta version of it, but there's a nice branding video, which we show and I'll show that it gives a little bit of an overview of peace drums, but um, the, this week, the program shut down in um, two of our three locations. Um, the third location being in the West bank, um, but our two locations in Israel shut down because of missile fire. And it is definitely, um, there are missiles definitely falling uh, near Haifa. Um, you know, if not actually in the city limits of Haifa. So our kids could not rehearse. We had 20 brand new students at the Leobeck school, which is the Jewish school in Haifa that was supposed to start yesterday. And, and that got canceled. And we have over 50 students in uh, Ibeline at the Moralius Educational Institute, and uh, some missiles have landed very close to Ibeline. And then we have about 20 new students from a school called St. John's down by the port of Haifa. <clears throat> so we have plenty of students. In fact, we have, we have not enough teachers is one of the things we don't have, but that's a different story. But we have plenty of students that are, and plenty of families that are really interested in having their kids participate in something more positive than than war, but um, you know the war keeps interfering, and um, you know I'm not sure what the what you know what the next I I I, I what I think is that the next is that the, what you'll see happen what you see happening now will happen until the election, and and then you know some movement will be made on all sides depending on um, who wins the election. So I think for the next six weeks or so, <clears throat> we're gonna see fits and starts of kids playing and kids not playing and people running into bomb shelters. I mean, it's it's really, really horrible. I talked with my good friend, Micha Shakur, um, just yesterday. And, um, you know, he, you know, he's in a, there's his family sleeping in an air, in a bomb shelter. Um, and when I say they're in a bomb shelter, most, domiciles in Israel have a room that's designated as a bomb shelter. So it's reinforced concrete, ceiling, walls, floor. It, it, most people use it as a spare bedroom. Um, and so they're usually in the apartments. There's also sh some in like apartment buildings. Um, but you're still having to go to a bomb shelter because if your building gets hit, that's the one place that it you know, won't collapse. So it's pretty horrible that way. And um, so I don't want to project that, you know, you know, Peace Drums is is uh, having a lot of fun because uh, they're not right now. Uh, in the West Bank, however, 
<clears throat> we have three we have three schools involved that all come to a central location and um that location is near bethlehem and we have a group of students uh 20 of them that come from hebron which is about 20 miles south of bethlehem they come in a bus every week for rehearsal um they weren't able to come after October 7th, all the way up through August. Um, then they started coming back in August because the uh, IDF opened up the road between Hebron and Bethlehem. And so they were good. They came the entire month of August. And the first week of September, something happened. They closed the road down. But now they're back coming again. So it's strange that in the West Bank, it's kind of normal. I mean, again, in terms of our students and peace drums, they're coming, they're rehearsing, um they're putting music together <clears throat> and everything is happening that they're that's supposed to be except that i'm not able to go because there's there's no flights uh direct flights from the u.s except on al al from from israel so i had a flight i was supposed to go in august that got canceled and united i don't know when united is going to start flights again to israel certainly not right now so that's kind of like the up to the minute in terms of kids playing, like like kids are playing when they can, when when they're allowed to get together, they do. They don't like stay home and say, oh, no, you know, because what they don't want more than anything else is sit in their rooms like they did during COVID. COVID was very traumatic for the, for everybody, as we know, but for children, it was super traumatic and they really, really didn't uh, appreciate being confined to their bedrooms and not being able to to play music with with their with their friends so um that's that's where we are up up to date um for those of you that have a peripheral knowledge of peace drums if you go into the chat um there is a uh about a four minute 58 second video um which you can click on and we'll view it and then we could talk a little bit more about questions that you might have so if you mute yourself go into chat and click Okay, I think Harvey muted himself while he was giving the end of the directions. But if you would go to the chat, click on the link, you should be able to watch the video he described. I don't see a link. I don't I don't see a link either. I don't no. either. It's okay i'm sorry um i put it in the chat it says to everyone maybe maybe everyone wasn't on when i first put that in so let me try again oh there it is do you okay. see it yeah now i do Okay, maybe okay. that's what happened. Um, so please click on it and watch it. But but definitely mm -hmm. mute yourself. Yes. Sue, what do we click on? Uh, there's a link. There it is. In the chat. Something they learn later in life. But when they're young, they choose friends based on positive experiences they have together. The Children are not born with prejudice. It's something they learn later in life, but when they're young, they choose friends based on positive experiences they have together. The ease of making connections becomes harder as they get older, as they learn about differences and divisions that exist in the world. This is especially true for children growing up in Israel and Palestine. These drums allows these children to build connections the experience Make sure you mute yourself. Somebody is not muted. Giving them the opportunity to see each other as fellow musicians rather than as members.
Did everybody finish? So what I'd like to do is see, first of all, if you have some questions, and then I could talk a little bit about um, uh, um, some of the ideas that, that have been bubbling up since even that was made. That That's a year old, that, that branding video. But I want to see if anybody had any questions regarding Peace Drums, either from that video or just in general. You can just unmute yourself and fire away. Mark. Yeah. Hi, Harvey. And that was a great video. Uh, actually, our Middle East team had seen that, oh, several months ago, and it's still a very good video. So thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I just was wondering if you could comment on the uh, schools that are in Israel proper, what the composition of those schools are, and what the composition of the schools are that uh, coalesce in um, Bethlehem. Sure. So, so the schools in in Israel, we have we have three main schools. We have uh, the Leobeck School, which is a longtime partner, uh, the Mar uh, which is a Jewish school. Um, although there are some uh, Druze that go to that school, and a very, 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 very small percentage of Arab, both both Muslim and Christian. But it's primarily a Jewish school. It's it's it, their curriculum. Is Jewish and they're they're considered by the education ministry a Jewish school. Um, in Ibelin, we have the Mara Alias Educational Institute, which is uh, uh, about a fifty percent mix of Muslim and Christian uh, Arab citizens of Israel. There are some small percentage of Druze that go to that school. Um, and in um, Haifa, we have the the St. John School, which is also a mixture of Christian and Muslim Arab speaking citizens of Israel. Um, so those are the those are the, the three schools that contribute about a hundred students to the overall mix. They each have their own instruments. A single teacher goes to each school so that all three of them are learning the exact same thing at the exact same time. And then between once and twice a month, they all get together um, sometimes in Ibelin, sometimes in Haifa at the Leobeck School, and they um, they play music together that they've been working on separately, but it's the same music with the same teacher. In the West Bank, uh, there's three schools. There's the Talita Kumi School, which is located in Beit Jala. Beit Jala is a small town hard by Bethlehem, right next to Bethlehem. And that school is a German Lutheran school. In fact, if you graduate from that school, you can go to any German university, any university in Germany, you have a, basically a German high school education. It's been around for a long time. Um, and <clears throat> that school is housing the steel drums. So two other schools, besides the, the students that go to Talitha Kumi, and they're a mixture of Christian and Muslim. Besides the schools, the students that go to Talitha Kumi, there's a school right up the road called the Hope School or the Amal in Arabic school. Um, it's literally a mile away. Those kids are, are less academic, um, but, le but no less musical. And they come once a week and have a separate steel drum class. And then the kids that come from Hebron are all Muslim. So initially, we, we, we found the school in Hebron through much research <laughs> we we i it, it took me about five years to get to, to get partners in the west bank it was very difficult because they didn't like the fact that we were also working in israel and they didn't know me from adam literally and uh i was able to get a wonderful uh professor of education there who introduced me to an amazing musician and music teacher by the name of reem handal and Reem is a Bethlehem resident. Um, initially, her her Sunday gig is that she is the organist and choir director at the Church of the Nativity. So if any of you have been on a trip to Bethlehem, 
on a Sunday, you've seen Reem play. She's probably the most visible organist in the world. And she teaches steel drums for us, which I find to be just a, a hoot. <laughs> so she's a really amazing human being. And she's teaching 50 kids a week. So the school in Hebron, uh, uh, the kids come from, well, they used to come from the elementary school. So they've all graduated out of the elementary school. But the elementary school was called the Arab Evangelical School in Hebron, run by the Mennonite Church. All of the teachers were Catholic and all of the students are Muslim. <laughs> so okay. these are these are the kids that come every week on a on a 40 minute bus ride on this road that is not always a great road to be on. Um, they come up to to Beit Jala to the Talita Kumi school and play once a week. Now these kids graduated last September. They 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 and they all went to four different schools. Um, however, every Saturday they come back to the parking lot of the Arab Evangelical School and a bus picks them up and drives them up. So and they never miss except when they're not allowed to be on the road. Um, and um, these are some of my favorite kids because I got to work with them a year ago August, and their parents were were amazing, um, and they were they're just you know just sweet sponges of kids you know musically and 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 everything else and um you know they they're very interested in in playing music with other kids um so that, that's the makeup so one interesting story i want to relate to is last uh january we were supposed to have a big music festival um so october 7th happened and that music festival got canceled because of the war um, and what the music festival was supposed to be is there were 50 kids from Bethlehem or 50 kids from the West Bank and 50 kids from Israel, almost all of them Arab Israelis. And they were going to meet together at a beach club, at a beach resort at the Dead Sea for two day for a two day steel drum workshop and festival, sleeping out, sleeping under the tents, glamping. Um, it was just going to be this amazing thing. And the first time ever that kids as young as 10 years old from the West Bank met kids as young as 10 years old from Israel. Now, granted, they're Arab Israelis, but we have to start somewhere. <laughs> and this was going to be the start. Um, some of our Jewish alum were going to come and help teach. And that, that would have been would have been interesting. Um, and the reason we were able to do it is because um, the the Dead Sea is kind of a loophole in 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 Palestinians from the West Bank and Israeli Jews and Israeli Arabs from the West Bank being able to go to a single place without a checkpoint. Mm -hmm. So you pass an Israeli checkpoint coming from Jerusalem down to the Dead Sea. But if you live in the West Bank, you pass no checkpoints because the, the Dead Sea is essentially in the West Bank. And I didn't realize that until about a year ago when we were in August, in a year ago in August, we were with our teacher, Reem. We had a day off. She said, let's go to the Dead Sea. It was hot as hell. It was August. And we got in her car. It was me, Linda, and my wife, Linda, and Reem. And we drove to the Dead Sea. And it was like a Tuesday, so there were hardly anybody there, except there were a smattering of people speaking Hebrew. And I recognize there is Israeli Jews and I'm going, well, this is weird, right? Like there's not supposed to be any contact between Palestinians and Israelis. So I asked the Reem, I said, Reem, like what's going on here? And she said, this is the loophole. Like, like Palestinians and Israelis can actually meet and talk at the Dead Sea. And I said, well, why don't we have a festival? And she said, no reason not to. The, you know, the bus is easy to bring kids from the West Bank. We know we can get kids bus from from Ibeline and it'll be fantastic. And of course, it didn't happen because of the war, but it is going to happen at some point, uh, you know, as soon as we can let it happen. What's what's currently at that resort are Israeli families who were displaced from the north because of the of the war. So a lot of them were put up at a hotel at this hotel and they're living in tents now. Granted, it's glamping. They're they're luxury tents, but they're still tents. You know, so you have sixty thousand Israeli citizens 
who have left their homes and their jobs and the kids have been have been out of school for like a year. You know, that's another sort of tragedy that that, that doesn't get um, amplified too much. But anyway, um, this would have been a tremendous coup for peace drums because it would have been the first time that anything like that happened. And again, all we would have done is get the kids together and play music. We weren't going to discuss politics. We weren't going to discuss the fact that here we are meeting across the border in like a neutral zone. Um, but I know we can do it. So as soon as we can do it, we will. But that's that's the makeup of the of the kids. So you have you have Muslim and Christian uh, Palestinian citizens of the West Bank. You have Muslim and Christian um, Israeli uh, uh, Palestinian citizens of Israel. And you have Jewish citizens of Israel. Those are the that's the makeup. And and my theory of change is that the Palestinian citizens of Israel can be the link between the Jewish citizens of Israel and the Palestinian citizens of the West Bank. Mm -hmm. It's it's not just my theory. There's I, there's there's a number of people who have spoken about this, and the only way I know to do it is through peace drums because. You're not going to do it through young adults. I mean, you can try it, but there's too much baggage. You can do it through young kids and you can kind of cultivate that. Roger? <clears throat> Harvey, in the process of your answer, you mentioned at least three different languages. And I'm just wondering, <laughs> is, is everyone bilingual? Is it a struggle to talk to some of them? Is it is everybody finding a common ground? How, how do you handle all that? That's a great question. So, so if I go over and I do a music workshop and I do, I work on music that the kids have worked on, I have to do very little speaking because we're just, we're speaking music. However, uh, in the West Bank, um, some of the kids speak English really well. Our teacher speaks, can translate from English to Arabic. She also speaks some Hebrew. Um, when we're in, when we're in Israel, then, and I'm at the Jewish school, um, we're, I'm like, I conduct all the workshops in English. Um, and so there's usually some of the students that, that speak, that are very bilingual. Um, our teacher is an Arab Israeli who speaks Hebrew and Arabic and a little bit of English. So, you know, we, we get by, you know, I can count off in both Arabic and Hebrew um, well enough to start. I can, I can do, I can say things like once again, or, or that was great, or that's too loud or that's too soft. Or, you know, I can, I can, I have enough Arabic and he Hebrew phrases to do that. But, um, you know, if I have to, I can conduct everything in English. With, there's usually enough translators, you know, and some of them are very young. Like, God, there was this 12 year old kid in, in the West Bank whose English was impeccable and was just back and forth between Arabic. And, you know, and I would say to him, you know, I look at him and I go, am, am I saying that right? And he'd say, no, no, you, what he means is, <laughs> so, which is always super cute. But yeah, it's definitely trilingual. Definitely. I wish I was. I'm really no a smattering of Hebrew and really even less Arabic. Yeah, because language can be a, a separator as well as a joiner, a way to get together, of course. And it's for just, sure. It's good. It, it's another but, it's another advantage of what you're doing. Yeah. And, and, and if we were if we were if we were so so that's so I'm going to talk about another aspect of, of peace drums. Um, so. Peace Drums is entering their second decade. Like, Greg, can you believe it? Like, we're we're into our second decade. I, I, I'm just a thrilled that a not-for-profit has lasted 10 years, let alone this not-for-profit. But um, we, um, we've we gone through various iterations. So when we first started, and, and this is kind of an answer to your question, when we first started, my theory of change was get the kids to play music and all the problems will solve themselves. And it didn't exactly happen that way, but it wasn't bad. I mean, there were some things that didn't happen that was 
that you know it was like how come these kids are not responding even though they're playing music together then i had the the privilege and the misfortune of receiving a USAID grant from the United States government through the State Department. And that came with a lot of strings attached. And one of the strings was that we had to get something called a shared society coordinator, which, which was a person who was, who was um, expert in Arabic and, and uh, Arabic and Hebrew and could bring, could, could facilitate um, dialogue. Okay. You know, so we're going to play music and then we're going to talk about the shitty things that are happening in your life or whatever, or the good things that are happening in your life. I can say shitty things on, on Westminster Zoom. Recording. Okay. So, so, you know, and that was terrible because it took away from playing music, you know, but I had to do it because I had to report to the state department and uh, it was real, you know, I was so happy when that grant ended because I could get rid of that aspect of it. So now we're back to only playing music. And, you know, that's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm never going to have someone come in and try to force kids to talk about issues. That is because we're only really playing music and making connections with music. If, on the other hand, we were something like the Jerusalem Youth Chorus, which some of you may or may not know about, which is a similar project to ours, which deals with uh, Arab, uh, Arabic, uh, Arabic cis, uh, Palestinian citizens of East Jerusalem and Jewish citizens of, of Jerusalem. Um, and they're teens and late teens and they get together and they sing. But when they sing, there are words involved. And the minute you have words involved, then you've got to go to another level. So they do songs in Arabic and Hebrew and English and it's a really wonderful program, but they have to have someone to facilitate dialogue because first of all, they're older teens and they're dealing with words, right? Like, like God forbid they should have to sing Hatikva, which is anathema to the, to the, to the, to the, to the Arabic community. Or if they had to sing the Palestinian national anthem, which is anathema to the Jewish community. I mean, there's all sorts of things that happen when you when you have words, right? And so I try to, even though I'm pretty being pretty wordy here, I try to say as little as possible so that all they're doing is listening to one another play music. That's my that's my theory of change. Like listen to one another play music when it works, you know, watch the kids' faces, look at the aha moments and look at the how much they love it and how much they enjoy it. And like, can we not talk about it? <laughs> If they want to go home and talk about it with their parents, that's fine. But I'm not a social worker, and 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 I'm not about to 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 do that. So so that's that's the the idea of language. You know, it's a music language for connecting. I I I'm really like this whole shared society and talking about things. I'd rather not to because it only it only exacerbates the problem. I think. I mean, I don't know if it's maybe it solves a problem. I don't know. But we're not dealing with words. We're dealing with music that that's what i tell people harvey have you have you said anything uh about some of the alumni from the first uh first band what what they've gone on to do yeah so not yet hey bob how you doing good um so um i you know the 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 Jewish kids that were in it are are all uh, either in the army or finishing some military service. Um, however, they're still in contact with with some of the Arabic kids. So um, I have two people I'm in contact with a lot. Um, um, Shada Ayub is is a, a Muslim girl who, when she first came. To, to Westminster to on tour in 2016. Um, what I remember most about her is um, she homestayed with somebody. I can't remember who she homestayed with. And she was 12 at the time. And we came back the next morning and the person who she homestayed with said, we have a small problem. Shada was really homesick and cried all night. I went, oh my gosh. You know, and now she's studying uh, pharmacology in Beersheba and she's she's kind of an unofficial board member. I, I I speak with her a lot in terms of 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 how you know how she perceives 
you know, both October 7th and what's happening now. Um, and she's, she's uh, tremendous to, to talk with. She's super, super mature. Um, another young woman, Fadwa, um, she's, she's studying medicine in uh, Umbria, Italy. And uh, one of our other Arabic boys are, is studying in Europe, but he's studying economics. I forget. I think he's also in Italy. Um, Italy's kind of a, a, a go-to place for the Arab-Israeli community to, to further their education. None of the um, boys or girls who were in, the, in peace drums are in university yet, but they will be probably next year. Um, but I'm in touch peripherally with them, and I'm going to be in touch a little bit more because Fadwa has contacted me and said she wants to kind of head up uh, an alumni group. At least that was, we were talking about that until this Lebanon disaster. But I think she'll still, I think she'll still do it. Um, and I don't know if Bob, you were on the, if you were on the call when, uh, when I mentioned this festival that we were going to do in, um, at the Dead Sea uh, last January, which didn't happen, but we had at least four, we had two, two Jewish kids and two of the Arabic kids that were going to come and, and help with this hundred, with these hundred students. So, yeah. And we have, you know, another group of alums that are, that, that, um, that are not quite out of, you know, not out of high school yet that, that um, were there during COVID and they were really a special group. They were really a cool group of kids. Um, so we're in touch with them peripherally, but, you know, th this, this project is two is one step forward and two steps back because when, you know, COVID hits and, and, and the war hits, you know, we always have to step back, but there's enough um, will to keep it going between the teachers in Israel and Michael Shakur in Israel and the schools and, 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 you know, particularly now that we're in the West, in the West bank, um, that's a whole nother, a whole nother dynamic, um, which by the way, we don't call peace drums in the West bank. <laughs> we call it Palestine steel band because peace in the West bank means end of occupation. Peace in Israel means the Arabs are quiet. Um, and so there was a time when I really struggled with changing the name. And I talked to a lot of stakeholders and I said, you know, I mean, what should I call it? You know, and, and finally, I kept peace drums and I just said, well, it's the feeling you get when you're playing music. So, hey, John. Um, could you tell us, that, can you hear me? I have, as clear as a bell. Thank you. Can you tell us about Safi? For those who don't know that young man, I sure. think his story might be very illustrative of peace drums and its richness. Absolutely. And, and you saw a little bit of clip of, of a little bit of him in the clip. So Safi was the youngest member in our first cohort. He was, he's an uh, Arab Christian, lives in Ibeline. His father is a, is a, a mensch of menches. Um, he's an amazing person, Osama Daim. Um, his, his whole family is salt of the earth, amazing people. But Safi uh, is the oldest of, of the Daim children. He's got uh, two younger brothers. And he was the youngest student and the smallest student. And um, he started at 10. So when he came, he was the, he started at nine. When he came, he was 11 years old when he came to the States in 2016. And um, he's now teaching for us. He's sort of the, the best <laughs> of what we can, what we can offer at this point. Um, we used to have Trinidadians living and teaching in Israel, which was, amazing and i still want to get back to that and uh i it's it's expensive because i have to bring people you know really good teaching artists pan players from trinidad to israel put them up pay them feed them house them but they do an amazing job teaching and 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 there's some amazing consequences that come out of that unintended one is that all of the kids both the jewish and arab kids both in in the west bank and in israel um, this is the first time that they see an African, someone of African descent in a role of authority and, and uh, you know, you know, someone who they look up to. And um, it's, you know, they fall in love with these people. Um, 
both you know men and and women and they do a great job because they play so well and it's you know pan and steel drums is is, is in their blood um so safi really grew up under two trinidadian teachers the first one a former student of mine brielle scott and the second one stefan west who replaced brielle so he had some great pan training and and he's you know it's not his original instrument he's an arabic um he's a kanun player uh, arabic lap kind of guitar and um but he plays pan really well and 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 he teaches fine i've 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 worked with him a lot to 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 show him how to teach in group dynamics um he's a bit shy so he doesn't quite have the dynamic that that the trinidadian teachers have or that i have but but he does he does you know as good a job as we could ask for um he you know his advantage that he speaks hebrew and he speaks um arabic um and um so yeah he's he's a great success story he's going to be leaving in a year he's supposed to go to Ber berkeley in boston and, well and, wonderful and, uh, yeah uh enroll in their arabic music program like he's been accepted there um and and so all, <laughs> yeah all, all 25 he'll do that but what it means is i have to i have to re i have to find a teacher so i've been <laughs> i've been i've been to trinidad twice now and i've interviewed people and i have people who can go it's just that i have to raise more money in order to send these guys but there's always a challenge <laughs> yeah thank you yeah sure sure Harvey, who are some of the original board members who that have stuck with you? Um, I don't know if Joan Sparks. You mean from Westminster? Oh, oh, um, Joan, uh, uh, just Joan. So, so in twenty nineteen, when I transitioned to uh five hundred one c three, and I had a, I had a, uh, I put a board together. Um. I made sure that people cycled off so that they weren't on all the time. So my board currently consists of actually a uh, uh, Shada Ayub in, in, in Israel. Um, and I have a, a young woman um, who, who spent, she's a musician, but she works for the, she works for the state of New York. She lives in Buffalo and her specialty is assessment and, and assessing programs and assessing grants and that kind of stuff. So she's, she's actually our board president. Um, and we have a former student of mine from the University of Delaware, Brian Birch, who is uh, Dr. Brian Birch, who is a uh, uh, head of music at Germantown Friends School. And then um, a, a friend of mine who's, hus well, her husband is uh, Edwin Estevez, who was at, who was at Grace Methodist. He was the minister of Grace Methodist up to a couple years ago. And they moved out to... Um, they moved out to Michigan. He took a job out in Michigan and she's a fantastic teaching artist and oboe player. And she's on the board. Um, for all they, of our Westminster people, that's Meredith who worked Meredith. at Westminster for a while. Exactly. 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 And then I still have my original accountant from 2019. His name is Ed Lynch. He does an amazing job. Um, and I'm missing someone, but I can't think of it. Joan. Somebody just cycled off. Um, Peter Abrams cycled off a year and a half or so ago. Julia so, Stone. Julia cycled off. Yep. Yeah, she's she's no she cycled off. So um I'm still looking to to build it, but I'll probably spend a little more time on that. I was trying to get a big grant to bring the kids here in 2026, but so I was spending a lot of time doing that and it got rejected. Okay, that happens all the time. So now my head's going to go back to, to grant to a uh, to board space. But um, yeah, it's it's. Uh, I spend about two hours a day doing stuff with peace drums. If it's not writing grants or or meeting people or on Zoom, um, I have a fantastic social media team. Um, we hired um, a really great uh, social media team that does a lot of Instagram and Facebook and, and fund fundraise through it and really keep, keep peace drums front and center. And that organization, they're based in Israel, Portugal, and Amsterdam. 
So when we have Zoom meetings, we have to get three different time zones together. But but they're really great, and and they're all they they all are, um, you know, with the with the mission of peace drums. Harvey, I was going to ask uh, I probably should know the answer, and you did allude to a grant that would allow a visit here in twenty six. I recall the peace drums being here um, in the United States, being at Westminster, and I was wondering if that process had stopped, or is it simply dependent on getting the funding periodically to make it happen? Yeah, so we were, we were there in 2016. Then we got another grant to come in 2020, but then COVID happened. And then I was hoping to get this grant in 2026, and, and Westminster was on the was on the docket for it. Um, it's it, it was part of the, the semi-quincentennial of the United States 250th anniversary. And they did not award us that grant, un unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, but just today, I had a Zoom conversation with a woman in LA. Um, um, her name is Sarah Timmerman. And she is one of the highest, she's a very high powered Democratic fundraiser. Um, and she came through a third party. She, she, she came to us through one of our people that 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 works with this social media company. Um, and um, we had a meeting today for the first time. Um, and she was just talking about ways of fundraising. And I told her about this grant. And she had about four or five ideas. She said, well, if I could help you raise the money, how soon could you get the kids here? And I was like, what? And I had just, I mean, the, we just got turned down two days ago. <laughs> So I'm feeling kind of bummed. And here she says, well, if I can help you raise the money, you know, this is a person that raises like a half a million dollars every couple days for the, for the Democratic Party from the presidential elections. Like, can, if you can help me raise the money, like, what do I need to do? <laughs> so that that was like five hours ago, that conversation. So, you know, I'm going to try to get the kids here. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Um, yeah. Yeah. So there's peaks and valleys. That's that's what I tell myself. <laughs> it's, it's what I'm doing in my retirement, right? <laughs> John, I think you put your hand up again. Yes, that's not a yes. lot. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. Um, Harvey, I'm intrigued with the social media coordinator that you have. Could you give us a, a feeling as to about how many countries are now aware of peace drums? And also, if this is a proper nomenclature, because I, John Krill, I'm not on social media, um, how many likes you have, just to give a feeling of yes. um, the breadth of peace drums. Yeah, so um, what's what's great about social media and and a company like this, which, you know, you know, Facebook is a, is a curse and a blessing, right? Like, like, like the way they collect information like i know who clicks on i know how old they are i know where they live i know their their um religious inclinations i know their political inclinations um you know 90 percent of our 95 percent is still the u.s um however um germany france austria uh, uh obviously israel the west bank um, some uh, Arabic countries. Um, um, you mentioned Amsterdam. You yeah, said Amsterdam, Portugal. Portugal um, nothing in China or Japan mm -hmm. currently. Um, probably because we're not, you know, we're not uh, broadcasting in those in those languages. Um, India, there's some, um, and so oh. so we. When we first started with this company, um, we had about 430 email addresses of, subs of subscribers. So, so social media kind of breaks down. You have subscribers. In other words, people that are willing to give you your email addresses and are willing to accept advertisements from you, whether it's a newsletter or an ask for money or whatever, right? And then you have social media, which you know, is just like you throw enough stuff against the wall and who's clicking it open and who's, you know, <laughs> so, so, so you advertise, you, 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 if you have a, 
a a twenty percent click rate on on your social media, like let's say it's Instagram or Facebook, like that's really great. We have a fifty percent click rate on everything. Oh, post. hurrah! It's unbelievable. And when <laughs> we started, when we started with this particular company, um, our donor management system, um, which is what everyone uses, um, some kind of donor, you know, some way to keep track of your donors. Uh, we had 430, 440 email addresses. Um, and we started with this company. We started doing a serious campaign, I guess, about five months ago. And we're up to 1,300 email addresses. Wonderful. Um, and I would say, like, every two hours, someone says, um, you know, sign me up for Peace Drums. Like, I get a an email that every time someone... Through through Mailchimp, uh, that's what we're we we left. You know, we're using Mailchimp. We're using, um, you know, various things, and and so this is this is what they do. Their their thing is to is to increase the presence so that if you do like a big advertising campaign, like hey, we're trying to bring thirty kids here, um, and we're raising funds for such and such. You you know you know we'll see what happens. The, the, this October will be. The first time we're, you know, in you know, in a year and a half, I've been working with this company, that we have uh, a critical mass of of uh, of email addresses and Instagram and Facebook posts, and that we're going to do an all-out sort of um, um, fundraising campaign. I'm very curious to see how it how it plays out, but yeah, that's the, the, they keep track of that stuff really religiously. Like like there's a someone sits in a dark room somewhere in the world and says, oh, yes, they're doing this or doing that. Thank you, Harvey. Sure. It's a very interesting. I'm learning a lot. I'm always intrigued that we uh, start those topics of conversation and um, end up using words that didn't even exist five years ago. It's fascinating. For sure they didn't. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Yeah, we've we've done a couple of webinars. I'm, I have a meeting tomorrow with someone who's who we're going to have on in October. Um, you know, we we're, we're just trying to keep keep it front and center as much as possible. Um, you know, the, the 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 hard part is is the interruptions we get of rehearsals because then we don't we lose content. Like like every time there's a rehearsal, there's they're filming the kids, and when there's a bigger event like a concert we're filming the kids and we're producing really good videos and, and keeping it front and center. But every time there's a disruption, it's like, you know, we're, we're, we're losing out on that content, um, which is equally important, right? Like, like the lifeblood of any not-for-profit or any church or any synagogue is money. And like my job is to raise it and, and figure out ways to bring it in and then the best way to use it. So. Harvey, I don't know if you've heard that Margie Eldreth is our new director of music I, for children and youth. Completely on board. I, I talked to Tony uh, like you couldn't have a better person. And are you going to start a steel band? We're hoping to. OK, yeah. I, I may have access to some instruments. OK, so that's the, um, that's the key, as you know. Yeah. And Margie would be amazing. Well, not would be. She is. She's. She's she's amazing. I, um, you know, maybe one of the best musicians I know, um, and a great teacher. Um, how, how did she come by that? Um, it just was a time for a transition to her with her. I think um, she'd been singing with First and Central for twenty five right. years, yep. and their director of music, or David Shalott, you know, yep. Yep. he yep. retired. And so I think it was just uh, the right moment and Tony contacted her and she was excited. She's an amazing singer, amazing piano player, sight reads. She's just like ridiculous. Like, every, you know, she was on four different international tours with, with, with Delaware steel. So wow. I, I, I know her really well. And there's an amazing, um, I, I met a Chilean pianist uh, back in 2019 when I was doing a, doing a social entrepreneur course, who's now teaching uh, at CAB, teaching piano. So when that she called me and said, hey, there's an opening here. And I said, I have just the guy for you. 
And he's an amazing pianist. So he's he's there and she's there. Like the music at Cab with those two is phenomenal. But when does she start? When she is Margie started Margie? last week? Oh, she started last week. Okay. I'll 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 reach out to her and and uh um you know see if she wants help putting a, a steel band together. Um, wow, that would be fabulous. Yeah, it would be fabulous. It would be really. So amazing. I have to tell you, uh, I was in church um, and this woman sat down next to me. And I didn't know who she was. She had a clipboard. So I thought maybe she had something to do with Westminster. And sure enough, she got off and went off with the kids. But before that, we sang a hymn and I'm like, oh, my goodness. Oh, that yeah. Voice. <laughs> that voice and of course i like to sit next to somebody who can sing because if i don't i have to lip sync yes um and with her sitting there i could actually make a little bit of noise because nobody <laughs> was gonna hear me what a lovely voice yeah she's amazing i've done a, a ton of stuff with her at, at first and central over the years and of course um she plays bass cans um but um yeah that would be that would be awesome to to have to have her run a steel band there would be, it would be ridiculous. Like both a children's band and an adult band. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll talk with her. I, I have some access to instruments that, that I think would, would really could, could make that happen. Um, that would be great. Really appreciate it. Yeah, no, it's, it's, I, I forgot it until you just mentioned it because Tony wrote to me and said, Oh, I don't know if you know Margie Eldridge. I said, no, or shoot. That's awesome. Um, yeah, so um, you know, I really appreciate the time, and you know, the most important thing is to spread the word. <laughs> we really appreciate the way you've stayed with it and worked so hard oh. at getting grants and all that you've done. Oh, it's 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 you know, it, it's really fun and and extremely gratifying and and frustrating at the same time. I mean, I mean, I don't know what I don't know what's going to happen. I don't. I really like. Conflict wise, I just don't know. And, mm -hmm. and you know, no well, one knows. And in the midst of everything, it offers a ray of hope. Do you know? It does. It does. And, you um, know, it, it does. I mean, it, it's hard. It, you know, I mean, it's, it, you know, these, you know, I just all, all the time think about the kids. It's like, come on, you know, you know, stop interfering with their lives. You know, they're just kids. So we'll, we'll see. Any any other great questions or not great questions? <laughs> that question a great question. Har Harvey, uh, besides the two hours a day you spend on peace drums and playing at Westminster Christmas and Easter, how <laughs> else are you spending your time? Well, um, I'm a grandpa, so that's um, super fun. So we go up to Boston as much as we can and and visit Margot and my my son-in-law and jack our grandson he's three and a half but i'm still playing like a lot around philadelphia um, um playing a lot of jazz vibraphone and playing in the theaters i'm starting opera delaware's doing bohem if anybody's going to that next month mm -hmm. i'll be in the pit um uh, linda's linda's just starting jersey boys at walnut street theater if any of you are going to see that she's in the pit all october so it's you know it's pretty busy playing um and uh, yeah I'm doing everything, but everything I was doing before, but I'm not at the University of Delaware anymore, which is great. <laughs> well, thank you so thank much you. for being here, Harvey. And thank Thanks. you for all of the commitment that you've made. And obviously there are a lot of folks here who were part of this at Brown Zero, if you will. No and question. It's just a delight hey, to see what's happened. I, I have a quick question for for, for Bob. Um, did, did you have contact with, with the Kurs when you were in Beirut, were you there at the same time? Contact with what? The Kurs. The Curve? Kurs, K E R R. Oh, the Kurds? Yeah. In, no, no, in no. Steve, Steve Kerr's father. Yes. Yeah, oh, Steve oh. of AUB. Oh, um, I, had, I had a brief, brief crossover with Malcolm Kerr before he was assassinated. Okay. Um, and Ann Kerr, I believe, well, she's been associated with uh, Delaware Ch with Churches for Middle East Peace. She's oh. been on the board, uh, I believe, and uh, I think her sister-in-law is still involved with that as well. But no, 
the short answer is just very briefly with with him. Okay. Yeah. I, I, when I read read about Steve Kerr and growing up in Beirut, it was like what? <laughs> yeah, he they grew up um, at the American University of Beirut. Right. On the campus there. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks a million. Um, you know, spread the word, Greg. We need to get to Fig again for for eating at some point, guys. Yep. Yep. For Let sure. And when when do you go to Scotland tomorrow? Sunday. Sunday. Great. Lots of time to pack. Yeah. <laughs> Preach and pack. Preach and pack. <laughs> there you go. Oh, here. Thank you. Here. Thank you all for being here. Oh, hey. Hey, Linda. Hi, Linda. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Linda, all just right. so you know, Harvey did a great job. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Thanks so much, Harvey. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Good night.